Welcome to our second set of lectures. Hopefully you guys went through the first um, four lectures on the atomic structure and we are going to kind of follow that up with what we know as the basics of electricity. So we're going to dive deeper into um, the electron and what role the electron actually plays in creating electricity. Um, hopefully these videos will be a little bit shorter, um, but at the same time, there's still some really good information. As a um, reminder, as we're going through, please remember every time I say take notes, I'm going to have you guys pause the video and you're going to take notes. And I am going to count on my hands five seconds. And during those five seconds, you should pause the video and then start it back up when you're ready to go. So have your notebook out, have it ready to go. Make sure you, again, if you don't remember from two days ago, you watch the how to set up your journal, um, your notebook, your journal. Um, again, remember it's a little bit different where we don't have kind of a vocabulary ahead of time. We are going to just kind of do it as we go along. So again, this is the basics of electricity, and this is going to be for today's lesson and tomorrow's lesson kind of leading us in, you know, we're combining the two. So here we go. All right, so basic of electricity. So what I want you to do is on a new page, I want you to write basics of electricity. Um, we're still in magical electrons. So take a second and write that down. I'm assuming you can do it without me telling you to pause the video. So take notes. All right, now that we're moving on, we are going to learn about how electricity works in the very basic fashion, okay? Obviously, we are learning at the seventh, at a seventh and eighth grade level. We are not taking this all the way to a high school level. Um, so as we are talking about these, keep that in mind that there are going to be some things that as we talk about, we're going to be like, okay, this is the basic version of it. We are not going to be talking super in depth. However, by the end of this trimester, guys and gals, you guys are going to have an understanding of how this works, what role the atom plays into it, how important electrons are. And honestly, when we start going a little bit later, you're going to actually learn how circuits work and why your lights work the certain way they do. How come Christmas lights can be different than um, your lights in your house? All of those different things. And for those of you who are interested in kind of electrical work or your parents are um, work with electricity um, or electricians or things like that, you're going to have a better understanding of what they do. So let's move on. So what is electricity? This is something you don't need to um, go through, but I want you to take a second before I show you this slide, and I want you to just kind of think in your head, what is electricity? Okay, so I'm going to give you a second to pause, and I'm just going to stare at you awkwardly and while you think about it. So what is electricity? All right, so what we know is electricity. Well, we know it involves the move of electrons. So we talked yesterday briefly on how we have these things called conductors, semiconductors, and insulators. And when we talk about them, it determines how strong of a hold the electrons have on the atom that they're at. So remember things like copper or um, gold have what we know as a loose hold, meaning that those electrons can move from atom to atom to atom relatively easy. They make those things called, those are things called conductors. So they allow to electri electrons to flow or electricity to flow through it. Okay, so remember an electron that can move from one atom to an atom to another atom to another atom is what produces the electrons, or what it pr produces the electricity. Sorry about that. It's invisible. You can't see it. For the most part, there are certain types where, we, where you are able to see it, but it's very rare. Um, and we're talking things like you're able to see it when a lightning strike happens, when you see a spark between um, someone... Um, getting static electricity and, and touching someone else, okay? So there's certain things where it's visible, but you're not really actually seeing the electricity. You're seeing kind of the response to the electricity. It does provide light, heat, sound, and motion. So in your assignment above, we asked you to kind of get some your pre-knowledge going about like what are all the things that you use that, that use electricity? And it will fall into some of these categories, light. So 
turn on your lights, chances are they're probably electric. Your heat, you might have an electric heating system, you may have a heated blanket, something like that sound, your, ear, your earbuds, your computer, your music at home, motion, car, whether you have a scooter, whether you have any different things like that sometimes are using for um, electricity. And it's been practical. So we've had controlled electricity for over well over 100 years, okay? And obviously, as it continues to get better and better, we get cooler and cooler um, technology that can go with it. But the basics idea of electricity have been kind of had for 100 years. So kind of what is the history? So you think of um, electricity, you think of Ben Franklin and the kite and kind of that original idea. And, and yeah, that's that's part of it. But way back, 2,500, over 2,500 years ago, the Greeks um, figured out that if they rubbed amber with other materials, that the process would attract the feathers and lightweight materials to the amber. So as they rubbed it together, they could then push and hold it and the things would be attracted. And so by doing that, they knew what was going on but they couldn't actually fully explain it or understand the concept that this is what we know as electricity. And that's a lot of how science works is you kind of understand the concept, but you don't really know the science behind it. Okay. So back in the day, we figured out that Ben Franklin thought that opposite charges attract and like charges repel. Okay. So here's a little animation. So we have a positive charge, we have a negative charge and what do you think happens between them? If we were to move this motion, would they move together or would they move apart? You're right. They are going to that animation's kind of weird. Okay, so sorry about that. So like charges are gonna be the same, okay? And opposite charges are gonna move away. So what I want you to write down in here is I want you to pause the video and take notes and I want you to write opposite charges attract like charges repel. You guys can draw a little animation here where these two things slide apart, okay? Or, and then you can draw an animation here, I'm sorry, I keep going, where the two things slide together and are connected, okay? So again, I want you to pause the video and I want you to write opposite charges attract like charges repel. And then you can go in and write here, the law of charges explain why electrons continue to be bonded to the nucleus. And we'll talk about what that means in just a second. So take notes. All right. So now that we're doing this, I'm going to pull back out these magnets that we had from before. Okay. So as I pull out these magnets, you're going to start to see the exact same thing we talked about. Opposite charges attract. So when I have a positive and a negative, I push them together, they then form one, okay? When I have them the reverse, they push together, but I can't really get them. So as you can see, they're kind of going together, not really able to do it. And if I push them together, watch what happens, see how good we can do this on the little camera. So I'll show you back here. It's going to pop up. Okay, that was kind of fast, but you can actually see the magnets not wanting to, they repel each other. Okay, so it just dropped. So this continues to help this idea that like charges attract, sorry, like charges repel, opposite charges attract. Okay. So the analogy I used last time is those little like um, wooden trains. You can understand that concept from when you're little, um, all the way up to now. So my one-year-old is starting to understand if he puts his trains together, in one way they'll stick together and make a big line. And if they push them together the other way, they won't. So again, opposite charges attract, like charges repel. So what does this have to do with electricity? So let's go back and let's talk about electron flow. You guys kind of drew something similar to this in your notebook, but we did not write this in. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to write electron flow and I want you to write in this part right here. An electron from one atom can knock an atom from an electron from, ugh. sorry, let me repeat that. An electron from one atom can knock out an electron from another atom. So pause the video, take notes.
All right, as you can see, sometimes we all kind of mess up our words and that's okay. But as I play the animation, so basically what happens is we have this copper atom that we had before. We have one electron coming in and as it moves in, in theory, oh, this should move. And the reason why this is kind of being silly is this PowerPoint was originally done in PowerPoint. We converted it to Google Slides and it doesn't always work exactly the same. So this will come in, boom, hit it, and it will replace. It's exactly what this animation is here of how this one goes boom, 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 all the way through. You guys have already written this down. The biggest thing that we need to talk about is we have a, a proton which and a proton and neutron, which are in the nucleus. This is a refresher, by the way, from a couple of days ago. Proton and neutron. Remember, a proton is a positively charged um subatomic particle, a neutron has no charge, and an electron is a negative charge. So we know that positives and negatives are attracted. So your positive proton and your negative electron are going to be attached to each other, attracted to each other. That's why the electron kind of floats in this electron cloud outside of the nucleus. Okay. However, remember how we talked about the difference between conductors, semiconductors, and insulators? Again, something with a loose hold like a metal, for example, is going to try to lose electrons. Remember, it's if you have an electron in the valence level of one, two, or three, they're easy to be removed. If it's five, six, seven, or eight, they want to gain electrons and they want to kind of protect them. Okay. If you're four, you're kind of in that middle zone we know as a semiconductor. And we talked before about how silicone is a really good semiconductor that when it's cold, it doesn't necessarily allow electricity to flow. However, when it's heated up or we know it as doping, it warms up and begins to allow electricity to flow. The reason why it's in like cell phones and computers, why basically the whole Silicon Valley in California was kind of created. But again, the part that we need to know is, so right here, this atom has a loose hold. And as a new electron bumps into it, this one's going to move to this atom, move to this atom, move to this atom. Obviously, there are only four atoms here. We are talking this on a hundred million, you know, scale where it's constantly happening. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. Um, in class, one of the things we talked about how like heat tends to transfer. And if this happens over and over and over again, you're going to get some heat with it. Think back to this. Think of like your laptop or your charger for your phone. When it's plugged in or it's working really hard, it heats up. And that's that movement of those electrons from atom to atom to atom as it happens over and over and over again, it's going to produce some heat. So that's a different form of electricity. We don't actually take that heat or that electricity from the heat and kind of use it as a as an electrical source, but it is another way that electricity is created. All right, so at this point, this is the end of kind of a wrap up. And, and what I want you guys to remember, like there's really nothing new here. But as we go through, we're going to talk about it. We're going to actually describe a little bit more in the next section exactly kind of how this electricity thing works. All right, so pause the video. And if, you, if there's questions down below, please answer the questions down below and wait for our lecture part two.